Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you followed the previous video on customizing i3, we are going forward here by customizing the colors. We are going to install a new runner for the programs and we are going to look also at some other tools. Let's get going. So this is the third video of the i3 customization and if you follow the previous two videos and you want to continue, let's go ahead here and hit Arch Linux to boot up the system. So now take a moment to do that. Now we can log in with our username and the password. Well, this is in my case because I have Xenit installed. If you have a display manager, you just need to enter your password and you will be in i3. And now I can type in start X and hit enter. And we are back in i3 right where we left off the last time. So if you are comfortable working with the terminal, you will not probably need to do the next step. But if you want to have a file manager available to work in the system, then we can always install one. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and install Thunar. So let's open up a terminal and type in sudo pacman-s Thunar and hit enter. Enter the sudo password and proceed with the installation. And Tuner is now installed. So let's open it up with the menu. So I'll hit mod D and type in Thunar and hit enter. And we have our file browser there. So sometimes it's useful to have this. I don't use it all of the time, but I keep it there just in case that I need to work with it. You can see right now it's not really much themed. And this is something that we are going to work on on this video. We're going to theme the browser and we are going to theme also a little bit more our i3 installation. So let's close the browser for now. And let's clean up the terminal. Let's install some themes in our system. For this tutorial, I'm gonna choose the Materia theme. So I'm gonna install it by typing in sudo pacman-s and then materia-gtk-theme and hit enter. Proceed with the installation and the theme is installed. The next step is also maybe to install some new icons for the system. So I wanna install the Papyrus icons. These are my favorite icons. So I'll type in sudo pacman dash s papyrus dash icon dash theme and hit enter proceed with installation and it's going to take a moment to download and install there you go so let's clean up the terminal now we install the theme and the icons but how do we set them in the system well we need a small program to do this and it's called lx appearance so we can install it by typing in sudo pacman dash s and then lx appearance and hit enter proceed with the installation and LX Appearance is installed. It's a very light program. So we can open it up with the menu. Type in LX Appearance here and hit enter. And now we can select the theme we want to give also to our GTK elements of the system. And that's what I talked about when I installed Terminator at the beginning of this series. So let's go ahead here and select Materia Dark. And we can see also now how it looks like. Now I want to change also the default font because I'm using Ubuntu fonts here on my system. So I click on the box here and scroll down until I find Ubuntu and select regular and click OK. And now I have also my fonts here. And now I can click apply and I can close LX appearance. And if we open up Thunar, you see now it reflects also the colors. Now let's change also the icons. Let me close Thunar here and open up again LX appearance. And let's go to icons. We have an icon team and I'm going to go with Papyrus Dark and then click apply. Now we have the icons installed also in the system. So if we close this and pull up again Thunar, we have our new icons here. And this is going to be fine for me. Now the icons on the status bar are not updated yet because we need to log out for the changes to take effect. And I'm going to do this in a second. But for now, let me close Thunar. And this is how we can theme our GTK elements of the system. Now, what about actually customizing our i3 colors? Well, to do that, we need to go in the configuration file one more time. So let's go in there. Let's type in vim.config slash i3 slash config and hit enter. So before we start customizing the colors for i3, let me pull up Firefox. And you remember it's in the second workspace. So I'm just going to go there and I can start a new session here. And let's go to the i3 website. So I'll type in i3-vm.org and hit enter. And let's go to the documentation here and to the user guide. Scroll down to configuring i3 and then clicking on changing colors. So changing colors in i3 
means having in our configuration file certain parameters and the colors we want to set. For example, the client.focus parameter is going to decide the color of the client currently in focus. Client focus inactive is going to do the same for the inactive focus client, and so on. So here we have an example of what we can use in our configuration file to change the colors of our system. So you can see, for example, here in the example, it's written client.focus. So they want to have the border with this color. They want to have the background with this color, the text with this color, and so on. We don't need to use all of these. For example, in my case, I'm just going to use a couple of them. And I'm not going to use also the child border. But what's important here is to see how it works. For example, here they defined a color for each element. And this is what we're going to do it. But remember, there is a better way to do this. Let's go back to the configuration file on the first workspace. And we need to decide where we want to put in these colors. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do it here after the resize option. I'm going to enter insert mode in Vim, scroll down one line and put a comment because I want to know this is the color section of the configuration file. And I'm going to name this window colors. Now move down one line and for setting the colors, I'm going to do the same thing that the configuration file is doing for setting the workspaces. And that means I'm going to use variables. That means I'm going to define variables for the colors. And then I can just use the variables when I define the colors for the elements. So let's delete this comment. And the first variable I want to define is the background. So I'll type in set. The dollar sign defines the variable and I'll call the variable BG color for background color. And now we need to decide what color we want to give to our background. So let's say we want to use a theme to do this. And there is a theme which I really like to use. It's called the material theme. And I go back shortly to Firefox here and open up a new tab. And I'll search for the theme that I want to look the palette for. So I'll type in, in the search box here, dark material teal color palette and hit enter. And I'll go here to the first link. And here I see the palette. And here I see also the X values for the colors. So basically here we can decide which background color we want to give, for example, to our windows. So I'm going to go with this light green here. I like this very much. So I can copy this color. And I go back to my configuration file. And then I can paste here the value I just copied. Like so. Then we go down one line. And let's go to the next variable. So I'll set this time the inactive background color. So I'll type in IBG color for inactive background color. And let's see what color we can give to the inactive background. I'm going to go with this gray here. So I can copy this and go back to the first terminal and paste this in. There you go. Setting out the next variable, let's do for the text color. So let's type in set dollar sign text color. And for this, I'm going to go with white, which I know is the hashtag and six time F. And the last variable is going to be the urgent background color. So I'll type in set dollar sign UBG color for urgent background color. And I want to give this a red color, which I know is sharp FF0000. So now we set the variables. So we can take now the example from the i3 documentation and set the colors of our system. So let me go down one line and I'll type in a comment here. Just want to remember here what the elements are. Then I'm going to create a tab and type in here border. And here for the background. And I'm going to do also for the text. And also for the indicator. The indicator is the line that we see always on the side of the screen, which shows us where the next window is going to tile. So let's go down the next line and start to set our parameters. So let me delete this comment here. And the first parameter I want to set is the client.focused. And for the border, I'm going to go also with the background color. So I'll type in here the variable, dollar sign $BG color. The same for the background. And for the text, I'm going to select the text variable. And for the indicator, I'm going to go with the background color again, because I don't need any to see that. And then I go down to the next line 
And the next parameter is going to be the unfocus client. So I'll type in client dot unfocused. And then for the border color here, we can select the second variable, the IBG color. So I'll type in dollar sign IBG color. For the background, I'm going to go with the same IBG color. For the text, I'm going to select always the text variable. And for the indicator, I'm going to choose also the IBG color. So I'll type in dollar sign IBG color. And the third parameter I want to set is the focus inactive. So I'm going to type in here client dot focused underscore inactive. And I'm going to choose for this again the inactive background color. Same for the background. Text color is also the variable. And for the indicator, I'm going to go again with the inactive background color. There you go. The last parameter I want to define is the urgent parameter. So I'll type in client dot urgent for the border. I'm going to go here for the variable. So dollar sign UBG color. Same for the background. The text is always the same variable. And for the indicator, I'm going to go also for the urgent background color. There you go. So now we can just save the file and restart that tree with mod shift R. And you see now we have the windows here with the right color. And if I open up a new window, the unfocus window here changed color and the text remains always white. So this is the first step in the customization of the colors. Of course, this is just an example. You can choose the colors you like. But for this tutorial, I'm going to go with this color combination. Now let's close this window up. Now the next step, how can we actually color also our bar so that it looks more consistent? Well, we can move down here in the file. And here we have the bar portion of our configuration file. So we need to put some of these colors as well in here. Let's go back to our i3 documentation. And I'll go back one page here. And I go down to the i3 bar and here we have colors. So these are the parameters we can set for our i3 bar. I'm not going to use all of them. I don't need to use all of them actually. But here we see the syntax and how it works. So we need to put, for example, this color parameter inside the bar parameter, define its background, for example, and the status line if we want that, and the separator. And then we can also define the colors for the workspaces. So we're going to use the same variables that we defined before. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go back to the terminal. Go down at the end of the line and enter insert modes. And let's enter here one new line. And we are going to type in here colors. Then I need to open a squarely bracket. Go down one line. And now we can define, for example, the background color. So I'll type in background. And I'm going to use the variable for this. So I'll type in dollar sign BG color. And I'm going to scroll down one line and I want to give a color also to the separator. So I'll type in separator. And for this, I'm going to use another color. Let me go back to Firefox and to our material team. For the separator, I want to use this black here, which is 282828. So I go back to the terminal and I'll type in this manually. So hashtag 282828. You can do this as well. Now let's move down one line and we'll repeat the same process as we did for the client focus before. Let's align this and I'll type in here the hashtag because these are going to be comment again like we did before for the client's parameters. And then I'm going to specify here the border and also the background and also the text. Now I'll move down one line, delete this comment. And the first thing we want to define as per the i3 documentation is the focus workspace. So I'll type in focused underscore workspace and for the border I'm going to use the background variable so I'll type in dollar sign BG color same for the background and for the text I'm going to use the text variable go down the next line and now we can define the inactive workspace so I'll type in inactive underscore workspace and we're going to use the inactive background color for that so I'll type in dollar sign I BG color, same for the background, and for the text, always the text variable. Now, in the last parameter, you are going to define the urgent workspace. So I'll type in here urgent underscore workspace. 
and I'm going to use the variable for the urgent background color. So I'll type in here dollar sign UBG color. Same goes for the background. And the text adds its own text variable. Now we need to go down one line, tab in one time, and close the squarely bracket so that the function is finished. And now we can save the file. And we can restart i3 with mod shift r. And our status bar is now colored as well. You can see also the separators are mirroring the color we chose. So everything looks good. There is just one thing which I really don't like. It's the color of the inactive text. So we can create a new variable for this. Let's go back here to our window colors. And I'll select another color for our inactive window. So let me enter insert mode and go down one line. And I'll type in set dollar sign i text color. And we need to define the color for this. So let me go back to Firefox because I want to maintain here the same custom palette. And I'm going to go with this gray, which is 969696. So I'll type in here, sharp 969696. And then I'm going to change this also here for the text. So I'm just going to insert an I in here and also for the focused inactive. And I'm going to do the same here for our workspaces. For the inactive workspace, I'm going to select here the I text color. There you go. Now we can save the file again and reload i3 and this one looks much better to me all right so this is the base customization with variables in i3 you see how it works you can test with this you can of course change your colors but now you have an idea how it works and if you have doubts you can write me in the video comments below or also you can look at the i3 documentation it's very clear and very nicely written so you remember in the first video i had to set this parameter for my display to work and i have here this command which is executing OS X render on my virtual display and the mode is 1080p. Now this works most of the time, but if you have a more complex display resolution or you have multiple displays, you can use another tool. Let's open up another terminal and let's install a tool called a render. So let's type in sudo pacman dash s and then a render and hit enter. Enter the sudo password. And there you go. Let's proceed with installation and a render is installed. So let me close this terminal and let me comment this line and save my configuration file. And I next it also and I exit i3 one time and I start it again. You can see now my resolution is lost. So we can use a render now to create actually a script for our installation. And I'll show you how it works. Let's pull it up. So I hit mod D and type in a render. And here we have our display. So for example, if you have multiple displays, you can see them here and you can select the resolution by right clicking and scrolling down to resolution and go to 1080p, for example, in my case. Now I can apply this by clicking the check mark. And this is applied to my system. Now this is applied only once, but if you want to apply it all the time, what you can do here, you can save this as a script and it's going to be saved under the dot screen layout directory, which is going to be created directly by a render. So I'm going to call my resolution here, virtual one, and then I'm going to click save. Now let's close a render and let's open up a terminal. And let's have a look at the script that was created by a render. Let's type in sudo vim dot screen layout and then virtual one dot ch in my case and hit enter. I'll enter my sudo password. And here you see the command that a render generated. So what we can do now, we can actually copy this command and put it in the configuration file like I did before. Or we can tell the system to run this script every time that the system boots up. It's up to you how you want to do that. But if you go for the shell script, we need to change its permissions first. Let me do this very quickly. So I'll exit BIM and I'll type in here sudo schmod. And I'm going to give execute permission to the script, which is under dot screen layout and the script name. And hit enter. Now what I can do going back to my configuration file, I can actually go down one line here and uncomment this and tell the system execute always and then the path to the script. So I'm going to put here the absolute path, which is slash home slash hermano slash dot screen layout. And then the script name is virtual one dot sh. Now I can save my file and quit Vim 
and let's exit i3 and start it again and now the resolution is fine so you can use the script or you can use the command as i showed you in the first video both works absolutely fine the difference is with a render you are also able to configure multiple displays if you have them now the next thing i would like to show you is if you don't like to have the menu and you want to have something different to run your programs there is another possibility by running rofi rofi is another launcher for applications but is not installed by default so we can install it by opening up a terminal and type in sudo pacman dash s rofi and hit enter enter the sudo password and proceed with the installation and rofi is now installed so let's see how it looks like let's type in rofi dash show run and hit enter so this is rofi this is one theme of rofi available here so this is how it looks like if we want to replace this with the menu then we can change the theme of course later so let's close this up by hitting escape how do we put then this command into our configuration file well let's go back in there and i'll go up in the file and remember here we have the key binding for our d menu so bind sim mod d is going to execute the menu so what i want to do here is to replace this combination so that rofi starts up when i press mod d so i'm going to edit this line and I put a comment here because I want to disable it. I don't want to delete it because I might want to go back to the menu one time. But what I'm going to do now is I will put down one line here, delete the hashtag, and put in here my key binding. So I'll type in bind sim and then dollar sign mod plus d and execute. And the program is rofi show run. Now I can save my file and I can reload i3. And now if I hit mod Z, Rofi is available to me. So let's see how we can customize Rofi. Let's close this up and close Vim and type in the terminal Rofi-theme-selector and hit enter. So by default, Rofi comes already with many themes pre-installed. And you can have a look at them as it says here by scrolling down and hitting enter. And you can see the results. So we have, for example, an arc dark theme here, which is also nice. We have another dark theme. We have this one right here, which has also some transparency. We have also this blue theme, but I want to scroll down because there is one which I like, which is this pop dark, which resembles a little bit to pop OS. Another one which I like very much is this sidebar, which display roughly here on the side. But I'm gonna go here with a pop dark. And as it says here in the preview, Alt A to accept the new theme. So I hit Alt A on my keyboard. And now if I press mod D, I have my Rofi theme there working for me. There are other themes you can download from the internet. Let's open up Firefox. And I go to the workspace number two here. And yeah, let's restore the session and I'll open up a new tab. And let's type in, in here Rofi themes. So we have some themes here. We can click the first link. And we can see here we have official themes and we have also user themes. So let's click this. And let's scroll down. We have some previews of how they look like. So you can scroll down and see the one you like. For example, this material here would suit you well also with my installation. So what we need to do is to go up and find a script, which is this .rasi file. So we can click this and we see what the content is. So what we need to do here is to copy this text. So let's go ahead and do that. Copy up the text. And let's go back to our terminal on Workspace ONE. And let's navigate to the directory where the themes for Rofi are installed. So let's type in cd slash user slash share slash Rofi slash themes and hit enter. Let's list the content. You can see we have many files in here. These are the theme files for Rofi. So let's create another one. Let's create a new one by typing in sudo vim material.rasi and hit enter enter our sudo password. We can paste in what we copied from Firefox and we can save the file and quit Wim. We can reload i3 and let's go again to the theme selector for Rofi. So I'll type in here again, rofi-theme-selector and hit enter. And I'm gonna scroll down until I find the theme I just installed, which is this one right here, material. So I hit enter to preview it. And this is what it looks like. I could go in and change the colors, but I'm going to accept the defaults for now. So I hit Alt A to accept the change. 
So when I hit mod D, the new theme is applied. So let's close this up. And this is going to do it for this video. So we went through the customization of the colors of the launcher and also for the display resolutions. We installed also a file browser and the tools needed to change the GTK appearance. In the next video, we are going to go ahead and change our I status bar with I3 blocks and later also to explore Polybar. There you go. This is one step further how you can customize I3. In the next video, we are going to explore other status bars like I3 blocks and other things as well. In the meantime, I would like to tell you also that there are going to be some new video of installation of Arduinos coming up very soon, especially with LVM, which was very requested. I hope you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.